Is Veracity ticker VRA going to make you money in the future? That's the question we're going to try and answer. And I'm going to give you guys my opinion on Veracity and the recent developments that we've seen come out over the last few months with, you know, the tradability of their POV or proof of view tokens, their recent partnerships and so much more. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, smash the like button, as well as check out the VIP Discord and our free Discords. All of those links are in the description below. So I think the first thing we need to do is look at the price of Veracity. And right now it's sitting at three and a half tenths of a penny with a market cap of roughly $35 million dollars. And this fully diluted market cap, we're going to come back to it when we talk about the POV marker tokens, because this is including both tokens. We have the VRA tokens as well as the POV tokens all combined into one smart contract, which is essentially why they are doing this migration to separate the VRA tokens and the POV tokens. So what you need to know is that there is about 9.8 billion vra tokens in total and in supply right now so we have a market cap here of roughly 34 million and don't pay too much attention to this fully diluted market cap but if we take a look at the last year for veracity well we don't see a whole lot of good because We've seen a pump of Veracity all the way to about 1.5 cents. And since that, back in March, just like so many other cryptos, Veracity has gone down and it's now down to about three and a half tenths of a penny. It is just, you know, not looking too good on the chart perspective. So if we take a look at what has happened to Veracity since we last made our video on this, well, let's have a look at the Q2 2024 roadmap items and what they've basically accomplished up to this point. We have Veriviews, so the video content management system. They've made an update to that. I don't think many people are too, you know, keen on this side of Veracity, but it does exist. We have the video library management, which is another part of that video content management software, which has, of course, been updated. We have Veraviews of playlist management, again, very similar, and the Vera player revamp. So all of this basically ties into what they have here as their Vera esports. This is kind of a branch of Veracity that is trying to implement, you know, partnerships with gaming studios to come on to their platform and essentially partner up with a different gaming platform. So this is also kind of ties into the partnership that they have with. So this can also tie in to the partnership that VRA has with Alex Becker and Elliot Trades Community, which is Neo Tokyo. And you, as we know, all of these massive gaming ecosystems all are in Neo Tokyo and Veracity is in there as well. So I'm imagining behind the scenes, you know, partnerships are being discussed there. But if we go back to our roadmap and what they've continued to complete, if we take a look at those POV marker tokens, this is probably the biggest controversy for VRA because they were initially saying that these tokens were never going to be tradable. Now they are making it tradable, but we kind of need to understand a bit more as to what's the purpose behind them making these tokens tradable when they said they weren't going to do it. But let's take a look at what has happened in this development so far. So they have chosen Tron as the blockchain for the POV token. And right now they are in a beta testing with that ecosystem. So they are, of course, working behind the scenes into a testnet phase on a Tron to eventually deploy the POV token on the Tron blockchain. Now, if we take a look at the roadmap for the launch of the POV tokens on the Tron blockchain, they do expect to finish this 
prior to the end of this calendar year. So prior to the end of 2024, again, development does take some time. So we're just going to have to wait and see. But they have completed this shortlisting phase that was basically ironing out which blockchain they were going to choose. Now they are actively in a testnet, you know, building out these contracts for the POV token. Then we have the Tron launch, the dev launch, Oracle's production listing and active phase, which is the burn phase. So there is still a lot of developments with this POV marker token launch on Tron. And as we all know, development does take time. But hopefully they are able to stick to their roadmap and have this up and running before the end of 2024. So if we take a look at why Veracity needs an entirely new tradable token instead of using the current VRA token as the primary token in expanding the ecosystem. So I am going to leave a link to this Medium article. I do think it does, you know, a okay job at trying to explain the rationale for making POV tokens tradable. And I think before, just to preface what was happening before, is that POV tokens as well as VRA tokens were on the same contract on Ethereum, which explains this, you know, full uh, circulating supply or full uh, total supply of about 100 billion tokens. So we had 90 billion tokens, POV marker tokens, and about 9.8 billion in VRA. So that is essentially what you see on a coin market cap. And now they are going into separating these two tokens, putting a VRA in one contract and POV into another contract, which is going to be on the Tron blockchain. So if we take a look at some of the reasonings as to why they are doing this, this is coming directly for the team and then I'll give you guys my opinion on this. So first and foremost, they talk about transactional transparency and they say that the unique requirements associated with the proof of use system is specifically designed to require transactional data to be recorded on the blockchain in order to maintain the transparency of the relevant advertising data and metrics. As such, by having this data accessible on an open ledger database, a token is required to be transactable, and that is that POV token. If there were no transactions on chain, there would be no place on the blockchain for the data to reside. So this is currently happening on the Ethereum blockchain, because as you remember, the POV marker tokens are on the same contract on Ethereum as the VRA contract. So this is all happening simultaneously, but because now they are, you know, separating these two tokens, they are putting a token with a VRA contract and a token with the POV contract. They need to have that POV token tradable so that there is somewhere in the blockchain for it to be storing data. And that is basically what Veraviews is doing for advertisers and, of course, for people paying that service. It's because they are basically getting all of their data, their metrics, through the Veraviews, you know, product by Veracity. And if there isn't anywhere to view that data, if there isn't any transactions happening, then, you know, how are they even going to have this ecosystem run? Because remember, all of this is in one place on the Ethereum contract right now. So then they say that they have selected Tron blockchain for the contract migration that we've talked about and operation of our data carrier tokens. The transition to a two token model offers token holders a new level of interaction within our ecosystem they say with the added value bound to POV, which ultimately serves as a data carrier thanks to its on-chain transactability, we offer POV as a secondary token for our dual token ecosystem where VRA retains its current utility and market dominance. So in other words, a dual token ecosystem allows the utility of VRA to be expanded allowing us to create new functionalities within our ecosystem and platforms. Now, they do talk about more of, you know, the technological requirements, the contract developments, the continued utility of VRA. 
But if we just break it down as simple as I possibly can, well, if we take a look at the utility for a VRA, we have, of course, staking. You can stake VRA in the Vera wallet, which you're going to get a 15% APR for that. That is one utility. Another utility is that it is the reward token for staking VRA. So you're essentially staking it, getting more tokens. Then you also see that it is usable in the transactions on the Veracity platform. And last but not least, it is that currency that is used for, you know, the purchasing of Veracity products within the ad stack or other products that they have. So that's the utility of the VRA token, and that will remain even as we have a new POV token. Now, on the other hand, if we take a look at the proof of view tokens and what their utility is, well, first and foremost, we talked about them being a data carrier. So we're talking about recording and storing ad related data, ensuring that we have accurate and transparent ad metrics for, in fact, those, you know, companies that are purchasing the services from Veraviews. It is also going to be utilized to complete transactions within the Veracity ecosystem. It is obviously now a dual ecosystem or dual token ecosystem. So they are saying that the POV token is going to complement the VRA token and ultimately expand further utilities for the Veracity ecosystem as a whole. So this kind of makes me think of another project in the supply chain industry, which is a VeChain ticker VET, where a VeChain and a VRA would be used as for value transfers, as well as, you know, staking and earning an APR on that token. And if we take a look at the other token in VeChain's ecosystem, we have a VTHO or a VTHOR token. This could be compared to the POV tokens that Veracity is going to launch and make tradable, where this is more for the operational activities of the chain. So this is kind of the best analysis I can give you guys. If you compare the VRA and POV tokens, to the VeChain and VTHO tokens. So just taking a look at, you know, if we compare both of these tokens, VeChain and its secondary token, how they interact within one another, they are very, very similar, of course. And I would imagine that something is similar to this is going to be, you know, the case for VRA and those POV tokens. Now, of course, the main token still remains VRA, which is still your number one utility token and the actual value of, you know, your entire ecosystem. And then the POV token is just kind of in the background and acting as the operational activities as it needs. So again, if you look at this, you know, you'd probably be more or making more money if you're investing in VeChain. But ultimately, if we look at it, let's say the last year, they are very, very coordinated in terms of different assets. And again, I do believe this is going to be similar for Veracity and their POV tokens. Now, if we take a look at some other partnerships, well, back in April, they did announce a partnership with Creo Engine, which is basically a studio of games. We have over 30 plus games on this platform and they are partnering with Veracity to bring a video functionality to Creo Play and explore in-game watch and earn rewards. So again, this kind of goes back to that Neo Tokyo partnership with Veracity and so many different gaming ecosystems. I would imagine that, you know, there is going to be more partnerships in the future with more game studios. But again, this is one step in the right direction for Veracity and, you know, that avenue of their ecosystem. So keep an eye out on this one as well. But if we take a look at the recent news, this is probably the more bullish news, in my opinion, that they have announced that, you know, they partnered up with a UAE company in Air Rev, or I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but essentially Air Rev is an AI startup and a specialist in the UAE. And both of them together are going to try and tackle this fraud protection 
that basically Veraviews is trying to solve and save advertisers money when they do ad campaigns. So if we take a look at the article related to that news, it says Veraview and Arev well combine their expertise in Web3 and AI to tackle ad fraud, which is an issue in a digital advertising. According to Juniper Research, global digital ad spending reached 382 billion in 2023 with 22% loss to ad fraud. And as you guys know, one of the main products of Veracity is Veraviews, which essentially tries to, you know, limit the ad fraud by verifying each of views on an ad campaign. So they also say that this figure is expected to rise to 172 billion by 2028 out of a total projected revenues of 747 billion dollars so if we take a look at the potential forecast for you know the utility and the use case of vera views within veracity well we definitely do see that you know people are still going to be spending a bunch of money on ads billions and billions of dollars every single year that is just going to continue and of course if you know nothing is done with ad fraud well as more money is spent the more is going to be lost from ad fraud. So we can kind of see here by this graph from HOC on Twitter that, you know, in 2028, we could have upwards of $172 billion in ad spent loss due to ad frauds. And that is kind of what Veracity is trying to solve. And of course, it is, in my opinion, a very good use case. It's just a matter of whether or not they are able to deliver on their mission. Now, going back to this article, they say by leveraging advanced AI analysis, machine learning techniques and patented Web3 technologies, the partnership aims to establish a gold standard for ad tech and ad fraud prevention in the GCC region and worldwide. And they say that Arev is recognized as the fastest growing AI startup in the country. And taking a look at where is Arev in the UAE? Well, we are talking about the GCC or the Gulf Cooperation Council region, which includes all of these countries here. So we do have many different countries and with this Arev partnership, which is an AI startup in the UAE, you know, focusing on, of course, AI products. They were known for their school hack, which is revolutionizing education with AI. They've recently launched an on demand tool, which is basically plug and play with AI agents giving that opportunity to anyone who takes place on on demand. As we know, AI is definitely one of my bullish areas for this bull market. We can see here they have over 3.1 million users and over 149 million queries made up to date. So this is definitely an interesting partnership. We are going to have to wait and see just how these two companies do integrate with one another and, you know, partner up to try and solve this issue of ad fraud and money lost due to ad frauds. Now, last but not least, another positive news on VRA is that they did burn about 70 million tokens, VRA tokens, that is, back in early July, bringing their circulating supply of VRA below 10 billion and they do plan on keeping the Veracity token or the VRA token as a deflationary token moving forward. So with all of that being said, what are my thoughts on Veracity and what do I think is going to happen? Well, I guess first and foremost, we need to take a look at its chart and the chart is just not good whatsoever. It doesn't look good because, you know, it went to about nine cents back in the previous bull market. Then it kind of had some legs in the early parts of 2023 with the announcements of, you know, more burning, their treasury burn, so on and so forth. Then we had the massive hype in March with everything taken off, but it does look like it has a faded. Right now we're around three and a half cents for the ticker of VRA. In my opinion, I am invested in this first and foremost. I bought some, you know, around seven cents. So I'm definitely down on my investment, but I'm looking at Veracity as whether or not this company is able to achieve what they've set out to do, which is ultimately, you know, 
be that company that helps other companies save money on advertisement campaigns. If they are able to do that, if they're able to integrate in different parts of the world with partnerships in the UAE and so on and so forth, well, ultimately, I would imagine that the price of VRA does go up. But again, I do think there is still more clarity needed to the community for the POV marker tokens as well as the VRA tokens. That is hopefully going to happen before 2024 ends. And it could align up with, you know, the peak of the bull market in Q1 of 2025 or Q2 of 2025. So that's kind of what I am looking at. Again, just taking a look at where we were back at the very bottom of the bear market. We were around at 2.2 cents or 2.2 tenths of a penny. And we can see that we are now at three and a half tenths of a penny. And we're even lower than where we were back in October of 2023. So again, it doesn't really look good in terms of the chart. To me, it's kind of just more of a YOLO play. If you believe in the tech and the technology, as well as, you know, what the company is striving to do. If you believe in that, it's kind of a, you know, very good entry spot. But if you are skeptical and you're waiting to have more confirmation, I wouldn't suspect that the price of VRA is going to blow up anytime soon as we still have many developments for the launch of this POV marker token on the Tron blockchain. So again, I wouldn't be stressing out in terms of a FOMO for VRA, but that is just kind of my opinion. And if we take a look at the VRA BTC relationship, just how that is looking, well, it's not looking too great here. We are just making lower lows on this. So again, keep it in mind. I'm still invested. I'm still holding my position. I still have some belief that, you know, this is going to bring a fruition to the ecosystem as they develop. But that's my opinion. It's not financial advice. And it is entirely your decision on what you do with your own money. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know your thoughts on veracity down below of course if you've enjoyed smash the like button subscribe to the channel check out the vip and a discord down in the description below and i'll catch you guys in my next video peace